Well, we just lived through an era of censorship, authoritarianism, and you yeah. weren't allowed to question. Yeah. And I just want to take you back to when Trump was president, and everybody questioned the vaccine. Not only the vaccine, but the FDA, the CDC, oh, yeah. the government, the big pharma. And let's watch. American public about taking the vaccine, and they should be. We can't trust the president uh, and take his word and take a vaccine that might cause harm to us. If and when the vaccine comes, and it's not likely to go through all the tests that needs to be and the trials that are needed to be done. Let's just say there is a vaccine that is approved and even distributed before the election. Would you get it? Well, I think that's going to be an issue for all of us. When we finally wow. do, God willing, get a vaccine. Who's going to take the shot? Who's going to take the shot? We will need to have access to the vaccine results so we can make our independent assessment to make sure that Donald Trump's uh, fingerprints are not on it. You can be the first one to say, put me, sign me up. They now say it's OK. Is the vaccine safe? Uh, frankly, I'm not going to trust the federal government's opinion. Wow. And I wouldn't recommend to New Yorkers based on the federal government's opinion. And the question of whether it's real when it's there, that requires enormous transparency. Would you trust that vaccine? There's very little that we can trust that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth. We cannot take for granted this process will be free of political influence. I don't trust the president, and I don't trust the FDA. If Donald Trump can't give answers and the administration can't give answers to these three questions, the American people should not have confidence. You're going to say to the American people now, here's a vaccine, it was new, it was done quickly, but trust this federal administration and their health administration that it's safe? I will say that I would not trust Donald Trump. Hey, how confident are you in the approval process of the FDA right now? How confident am I? Uh, I'm not that confident. Yes, I would be hesitant, but I'm going to ask a lot of questions. You're going to need someone other than this FDA and this CDC saying it's safe. You've got to make all of it available to other experts across the nation so they can look and see. And they didn't. So there's consensus this is a safe vaccine. Uh, what I'm worried about is that there's some sort of October surprise and that there is a pressure put on the decision makers here to announce a vaccine in October of 2020. We're going to put together our own group of doctors and medical experts to work. So wow. that's just a sample. I got this off Twitter. That's just a sample. Wow. That's amazing that that's... Doesn't so, that make you nuts? I, that's not on YouTube, I bet. Oh, I wonder. Well, it's got it's on now. <laughs> well, good. Well, it is. Uh, I mean, I, I'm hopeful that you know we can get back to just telling jokes about none of this stuff. <laughs> uh, but like you said, politics. I always tell people like, oh, you got to talk about politics. I'm not into politics. People tell me I'm not into politics. Yeah. I'm like, are you into? Uh, first time I was. Are told you into that, driving on a road? That's what I. <laughs> the first time it was right after when, when the housing crash happened in 2008 or whenever that was. Yeah. And I was talking to somebody who had just lost their job because they were a mortgage manager or something and they were unemployed and I was talking about politics and they go, I don't, I'm not into politics. So I'm like, are you into your own life? <laughs> Do you pay attention to your yeah. own life? It's like what I tell people, if you want the pothole, fixed in front of your house that's politics yeah. if you want your kids to go to a good school that's politics if you if want you, food that's not poisoned. poisoned if you want to be able to get sick and not go bankrupt that's politics yeah. every part of your life is politics and yeah. people think it's like some hobby that people like you and me get to uh, mess around with yeah. because we have free time that's not it it's like if you, if you don't participate in politics you're going to be ruled by your lessers Yes, you're going to be ruled by idiots. And we Plato are said, still, yeah. and uh, yeah, so we have to fight back against that. And I think um, I think it's happening. I do think, and I, I do think enough people are waking up to the fact that they could be locked in their homes. <laughs> that that was a real wake up, wasn't it? You're locked in your homes. Yeah, your business, you're not allowed to open your business, but these guys can. Isn't it amazing they can't? fix a pothole in front of my house, yeah. but they can put sand in a skate park like that. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that amazing? They were on it with the skate park. Hey, man, how about the one that got me was I went like, wow, here in L.A., when they went out and arrested the paddle boarder yes! in the middle of the ocean. Yes, remember that? And I went like, wow. That and video of it. There is a time, and that's this. I'm glad you and we brought that up because the, uh, I'm glad I brought that up. The, uh, <laughs> the, because there comes a time when the police have to say enough. No, we're not going to do that. Right. And there was one guy in Orange County, the sheriff there, who they got rid of after that, who he said, I'm not going to enforce this stuff. But the, before that happened, they were doing that. And that's what happened in East Germany. If you go back and if you look 
at what happened to the Stasi, the reason why East Germany fell was because the secret, secret police, like the ones that are kept away from the normal police and out of society, when they were told to go and kill the protesters, they didn't do it. Because they had heard, and they'd heard from this and this person again, word of mouth that my uncle's out there, my aunt's out there, mm. and my nephew's out there, and we're not going to do it. As soon as the police stopped enforcing this tyranny, as soon as they refused to kill their fellow citizens, East Germany collapsed. And that's what I was waiting for in the United States, was for the police to not enforce rules that were just absolute lunacy, like arresting a paddleboarder out in the middle next to a pier all by himself. Mm -hmm. Now, when that happened, I said, well, then, you know, the police themselves have to take it upon themselves, just like a soldier in war, you know, like the My Lai Massacre. Mm -hmm. You know, the only reason the My Lai Massacre got got exposed at all. That was the, the, the massacre of a village in, the, in, the, in Vietnam in, in 1967, 68. Um, the only reason it came out is because one helicopter pilot a year to the day later couldn't live with his own conscience about it and then had to report that. And that's the only reason that it was able to come out because it, it does take individuals to have courage to say enough. And that's why like for people who are like, you know, Robert Kennedy is unelectable like this. Blah, blah, blah. It only took only 3% of people fought in the Revolutionary War. We need that 3%. 3% is enough, but we need 3%. We need 3% of the people in California to say, enough of this shit. We need 3% to say, okay, I'm going to gather enough, citizens, enough signatures to really get rid of Gavin Newsom, to, get, to, to say enough with this one-party system here in California. Because California is a great state, and I have a lot of faith in the state, but they are going to need to let go of a broken system. A system that is not really supporting the people, that is not democratic, and that does not improve the living conditions of its citizens. The reason, you know, my theory is, Rob, why we spend all this time talking about non-economic issues, meaning things like bathrooms and gender affirming surgery and white supremacy and all. The reason why we've been uh, yeah. uh, over talking about that stuff is because the Democrats and Republicans turned their back on the workers. Right. Yeah. And so you, I don't know if you ever saw that video of Chuck Schumer when he was saying that Donald uh, that he was saying that. Oh, we're going to someone asked them, hey, you know, blue collar workers are going to Donald Trump. And he said it doesn't matter because for every blue collar worker we lose in this city, we're going to gain two white collar vo voters in the suburbs. Well, that's what the Republican Party is supposed to be doing. <laughs> so they he just admitted we don't represent workers and neither does the Republicans. So fuck them. And where are they yeah. supposed to go? And now we're all talking about div a diver a diversity and, cl and in equity and inclusion and all that shit. And why? where's that coming from? It's not coming from the ground grassroots or people it's coming from blackrock and it's coming from bill vanguard. gates and vanguard and why are they doing that because they're evil co corporations that are raping the planet and they have to put a yeah. virtue signal on the front of their company and that's how they do it with the diversity and equity and inclusion and all that shit and that's what this is all it doesn't about. improve people's lives and it doesn't improve people's lives it, it doesn't does improve not. education you know what would really help so if Someone, we can get more than fifty percent of the of the biggest school district, the the the, the L.A. school district, to, to graduate high school, that would help. That would help. Mm. Some someone explained it to me like this. So you know how we feel like the, we're the we stayed the same. We stayed anti-authoritarian, anti-censorship. Yeah. You know, uh, freedom. We're, we're right wingers, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I had it explained to me that in the rest of the world. The left is more connected to the workers. Yeah. In America, the left leadership is connected with the professional managerial class. So what yes. they want is they don't want to have a minimum wage increase or they don't want to have more a jobs program for every. What they want is a black person on the board. They, oh, that's, yeah. that's their idea of helping black people by getting edu wealthy, educated, college-educated black and brown people on the board. Right. And so now we're represented. Well, that doesn't... We you know what helped them more? Medicare for all so they don't right. go fucking bankrupt. Or how about free college? Or how or living wage? Wow. That would go way longer. Go ahead. Well, the... You have... Um, what was I going to say? The... Um, well, the... The educational system, that, that's, that's got to be the, the beginning of it all. You know, we have to be able to, um, to, to graduate people who are going to be able to do things and be able to have function in society. We have to have uh, people who are going to follow through. We have like global warming is, okay, well, you can say global warming. We're, it's still, 
what is the impact? We got bigger, way bigger problems in global warming right now. Global warming is a gigantic distraction away from like health for people, poisoning of people, poisoning the water supply, educational problems that we have, health issues that we really have. And we, th this is the great distraction of, of also not doing anything. And another way to fleece the public. And in a bigger way, in a way to fleece the public permanently, because you can always say, well, this is happening and then this is happening. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and, they're, and it's, again, cherry picking data, whereas the real problems, we have to worry about like overfishing. We have to worry about that. We should, that you should need to put a three year moratorium on fishing. And l instead of paying $100 billion to Ukraine, let's pay these fishermen to not fish for five right. years. Let's do that. Let's also worry about Fukushima and that nuclear, yes. the nuclear waste that is coming every single day, polluting the biggest, largest water, the largest body of water on the planet every single day, leaking into it. Did you know that a, a month after it happened, there were tests and it was already being uh, uh, picked up? Uh, a cesium 57 was a 37 57 i'm sorry that was being 37 that was picked up in nebraska so so this is you know but nobody wants to talk about that no one wants to talk about things that can really help people we need to figure out a way to like to stop the poisoning and figure out a way to like to not make people sick we need to we need to have a, an example of it we need to have show people a way out of obesity show people out of a way of poverty show people out of a way of ignorance show people a way to get educated and there is ways to do it but we have to we have to have that as our focus not the great distraction another great distraction covid the the second wave of covid nonsense which would be the global warming we need to talk about things that can improve people's lives getting people healthy Getting pe keeping people out of the medical uh, place and the idea that at health at any weight is just it's just so crazy. Uh. You know, my family's Filipino, so of course they're in the nursing and doctor and nursing uh -huh. and medicine. We need to get people off of pharmaceutical drugs. What happens is they're lovely people, and I, the medical establishment does a lot of really really good things. But they and they but if you get shot, stabbed, heart attack, stroke, you better hope you're in America. But for anything else, they just they don't know what they can't cure it. But my my great uh, cousin, who's a great doctor, Dr. Renee Lapp, who just passed away recently, he said, "Here's the problem, Robbie. We have." People that come into the into the medical system, they're getting they're on the average between seven and twelve different prescription drugs, which is making their immune system very weak. But what happens is they see something on TV and they go, "I want to take that," and if we say no, they'll just go with another doctor and they'll get it. And so that is just another drain. If you take like the ten dollars per drug per person out of this gigantic millions of people, then you can have actual money that we can put into something that can concentrate on preventative measures to make people healthy. That is, that needs to be at least discussed. Uh, that's a big part of RFK Jr.'s platform. Yeah. He's talking about all the chemicals in the water, all the chemicals in the air. All That's the why I'm supporting him, and I'm going to be there tomorrow, and I'm going to spend time with him because I want to talk to him about some other things and and make sure that that's part of that platform. And I, I do think, like, for whatever reason, I, whatever amount of fame and, and wealth I've been lucky enough because of the, the great graciousness of the American people to have, I do think, like, at this time, this is an important, an important opening for the potentiality of the enlargement of freedom. And I, I do think a return to it. And I think uh, Robert Kennedy, That's you, you, it's not a, a coincidence that like the Daily Mail is going after him. <laughs> How many marriages he had. To me, it's like, it's not about the imperfection. You know, I'm not looking for perfection in people. I'm looking for ideas. I'm, right. looking, well I'm looking for integrity. And he yeah. has both. Well, Ex-wives and integrity. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> don't you wish he would have run third party though, independent? Because they're not going to have if if the Democrats were going to have debates, I see the utility in running inside that party. But now all he's doing is putting himself in the hands of people who are going to cheat him. I know. Well, that's one of the things I will discuss. Okay, good. All right, good. That's Lobby one. for me. Lobby on it. I will. I, I don't think that I would love to come to that fundraiser, but we're in Bakersfield tomorrow night. So well, well I'd rather I'd rather be at your show. Believe me, with that nice, <laughs> that killer audience of yours. And thank you for being a voice of sanity for me. I want to thank you personally for being a voice of sanity for me. In, in a very dark time where I felt like I felt going crazy. And it was like, well, I can listen to Jimmy. Jimmy's still there. Not everywhere, but Jimmy there. <laughs> you, know, you get censored and shit like that. Well, that's so. really sweet of you to say. It's a big deal that, you know, for me, just to even meet you is such a big deal. I'm such a fan. Always was. I still remember your set on 
I remember your set on a young comedian special. I remember the dude joke, the Elvis on a fish hook. I mean, wow, Elvis on a fish you. hook. I, I couldn't get over that <laughs> joke. I'm it like, was, how do you? I was a young comic. I'm like, well, how do you think like that? Like that's what I was thinking. It you know? was just the silliness of spending time by yourself and in coffee shops and coming up and just doing Elvis like ah, ah and then just the next thing I know like ah, you know, and it was just a. You know, that's why I do think like the comedy special that's on Fox Nation is like, it is the absolute lunacy and trying to be silly with it, with everything. And that's sometimes, you know, it's imperfect in the sense I think I swear too much and it's crazy, but, and it, it has some unevenness to it, but it has a lunacy to it that is a celebration of, of being silly and trying to laugh at what's happened to us in our culture. I mean, there's a segment on there that thankfully has not gotten any mainstream press where I talk about a guy hitting on a lesbian. Ah, yeah. And Buddy. I, I think that that is a legitimate area to, for laughs. And I think if you can just act it out, you know, I think it, it, it does work. And I'm, I'm thankful because I was wondering whatever the, the intelligentsia is going to come after me for. And thankfully, they haven't talked about that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a funny bit. It's a, it's, it, you know what I like about it? It's not mean. It's not yeah. a mean bit. You're not punching down. You're not inciting violence against anybody. You're yeah. just making an observation. And isn't this funny if you look at it like this? Yeah, if you look at it like that. And just, you know, the fact that you, when you talk about um, you're automatically racist, you know, systemic racism. If you're white, you're automatically racist. No, I don't feel racist. Yeah, that's how racist you are. That's you don't even feel it. <laughs> you can't even tell. It's, it's just like, it's like some weird kind of witchcrafty, isn't it? Mm, Isn't yes. it a witchcraft thing all over again? It's by guilt. And then even in the witchcraft trials, Blair White, I believe is her name. She's got a great book about it. And it lasted 10 months of lunacy. But the difference between, as Andrew Doyle talks about, the difference between the purity tests of these crazy people back in Massachusetts in 16-whatever, they at least lowered themselves that they're, they're beneath God and that they're unworthy because they were Christians, right? The, the difference between the social warriors now is they think they're above it all, yes. the purity test. So they're even in a higher so that is really dangerous. So that that's really interesting to me. And it's a very good book. The the New Puritans by Andrew Doyle and, and Blair White talk about the witches, which is really interesting because what it makes you realize is that people haven't changed. Yes. Well, it the, the enthusiasm that people <laughs> have to try to shit on you if they don't agree with you on COVID or whatever they think. Oh, yeah, that yeah. It's like it's their moral duty to fucking stamp a boot in your face and oh, cancel yeah. That's you. That's what I've been getting the last, you know, weeks <laughs> since this comedy thing came out. Oh, but, really? Yeah, but not everywhere, but it's just enough. What it is... I mean, you are, you're, you are not fringe. Yeah, right? I don't, and they I don't want think you. So. To, they want to make you think you're fringe, yeah. and that's what, what Chomsky taught us: is that our people like us, they don't reflect what we're thinking back to us in the mainstream media. So we yeah. think we're the only, and that's why it's important that you did your special. And I think that's why I, I'm glad I did my special. But go ahead. Well, thank you. No, but Noam Chomsky is a real touchstone because he's the true, um, the true liberal in in the sense of the most important thing that he says very clearly is human rights and the human human condition and expanding things, expand human rights and improve the human condition. That is the tantamount, that is our goal and should be our goal. That's traditional liberalism. How do we improve the lives of human beings? That is it. And we have to continue to say that. And that's gonna be how, it's by increasing the ability for people to be healthy, to have education, that uh, to have the freedom of speech. And that was the thing that, you know, um, uh, de Tocqueville was very original. Uh -huh. De Tocqueville, when he talked about the United States, the thing that was most surprising to him was how free he felt the people were to critique their own government and how unique that was. How they can just say, you know, what they really felt. That was a unique freedom that Americans possessed at that time. I we will say that back that, to that. Yeah, that is under assault, but it's a cycle. Like I, you know, from what happened, uh, you know, from the Republican side in the blacklisting, you have a similar blacklist now that is happening with this cancel culture that is coming from the left, but it's, it's what it is, is positions of power. They wanna hang on to power. So the, the idea of left and right is again, as you know, is, is just another illusion. What it is, it's, it's the power base not wanting to give up power. That's right. And it's whether we're Republican or Democrat, it just it doesn't mean anything. That's right. That's why I do think Bobby Kennedy is, 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 the potentiality of Bobby Kennedy to really make some change is to acknowledge the fact that there, this is a lie. We are being played. 
and that the real problems of mankind, the real problems of people, to improve real problems, are not being dealt with. And that's what thing. Hope it was nice to be able to have, actually have a conversation where we can discuss this and let people decide for themselves what is important for their own lives, and let, and let them have the conversations because at the end of the day I thought the one thing they can never take away from Jimmy and me is our ability to perform live because they and they did take it away uh, we did take it away they but they couldn't take away me meeting you on the side of the street and having that conversation the same thing that the Soviets relied on the Soviet citizens word of mouth they can't kill word of mouth. They may call it misinformation, disinformation. They may call it, you know, um, you know, doing your own your own research. research. But they can stop. They couldn't stop that. And I think that at the end of the day is what made this COVID uh, lies collapse. Let me see if I had I had written down some questions before I had <laughs> forgot I had some. Uh, you're a Scorpio. Would you like to apologize? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've mellowed out though. My my wife my wife says my wife says like that. Um, you know when you get in your fifties, your the, the 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 separations between the left and the right hemisphere of your brain melt. And she she called she called it um, male. What do they call it? Um, instead of um, male. You know, when a woman goes through um, menopause, menop male menopause, she calls it, you know, andropause. <laughs> ah, okay. And maybe there's something to it. I think there is something to it. So your daughter's also a wildly successful musician. And does it, did you encourage her to go into show business? I wanted her to do what she loved. And she and when she was 16, she had a, 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 a like a test contract with the Warner Brothers. And, um, and she... Um, it didn't go anywhere, and it was very frustrating for her at 16. And I had to tell her, I said, listen, everyone you had to deal with no longer has a job in the music industry. The music industry is collapsing, mm -hmm. but it's hard for a 16-year-old to pick that up. Yeah. But it was a good lesson, and I said, you know, when you're talking to kids, I said, if you can just get 3% of what I'm saying right now, I'll take it. And I said, you have to, this is a very good thing that happened because now you have to question him, why am I really doing this? Because it's, it's to become famous, it's because to get people to like me, or because I'm a musician and I'm an artist and I want to express myself for me. And, and she has done that. And I'm so proud of her because she's become an incredible musician and a wonderful performer. And she did it all on her own. And I'm very proud of her. Wow, nice. Nicely done. Um, I think that's a... Uh Hey, so Ireland just passed this uh, draconian hate speech bill. <laughs> oh, God. Why don't they focus on their day drinking more? Why are they... <laughs> Ireland has bigger problems. You know, it's funny because I was in Ireland. I spent a lot of time and I love the Irish. And if you look at some of the great writers and drinkers of, you know, for such a small island, what a gigantic impact they've had. Incredible impact in literature and in, mm -hmm. and, and, and in world history. And most of them, of course, got the hell out of there. But they starved for, because they took potatoes away. They're an island. There's oysters. There's fish. Go eat a fucking <laughs> clam. What is wrong with you fucking idiots? Just go eat. It's just just go eat an oyster. And they they just sat there in their little cabins, burned that old petrified wood, and starved themselves to death. That's how ignorant the Irish were at that time. Uh, but I, I do think this is just another way of using their ignorance. Is just the idea that you're going to make the world a better place. Anybody who did that always makes the world a worse place. But the idea isn't to shut shut up people. It's to expose people and say that idea is terrible. How dare him say it? I'm glad he said it. Now we know who he is. You're right. Is it, is it, shouldn't that be? That's the traditional. But now they think of people as so fucking feeble yes. and such idiots and so stupid and so gullible. It's that elitist crap of like, we got to protect these people because they're so stupid and they're so beneath us. That's why I don't like the term punching down. The idea that I'm above anybody, I'm not above anybody. I'm just a person who just chooses to think for himself. And I don't put anybody below me or above me. And that's the a uniquely original thing about the United States of America. Because my mom's Filipino. And like, if you're born in this, that's why she knew education was so important. If, if you're born in this class, you're going to die in that class and that's it. And like she was able to find money that the Japanese buried in a cave along with these metal things that they thought, she thought they were pineapples, metal pineapples. She thought they must have value. So she took it back to her mother and luckily her, her brother-in-law said, those are hand grenades. Stop. Don't touch those. Oh, wow. And so her mother cleaned that money off. This is true. And she that's what paid for her to go to school because she had to pay to go to school. That's why the United States is such a unique place because you can go in and out of the social strata here. 
It's not a case system like in India. It's not a case system like most of the world. We can go. I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to have a meeting tomorrow and, and dinner with one of the guys who's in 20 percent of the polls. You know, Robert F. Kennedy, and I'm a you know a dr college dropout comedian. But the ability to think for myself and to allow myself to get into that position and to have a society with the freedoms that we have. That's why I want to help maintain that for my children so that the, the success that I was able to have with my career and the dumb jokes I was able to say and the, the, the ability to build what wealth I have and the freedoms that I have, that is what I care about now. I don't, I don't know how much time I have left on this sphere, but with the time I do have, I would like to make sure to the best of my ability that these things are, are being protected to the best I can. And I don't know how else to do it, but to get involved in the political system. Uh, you know, I just wanted to make one point, you know, uh, Chomsky was a big hero of mine oh, too, yeah, me too. And he opened, a, you know, manufacturing consent. Um, I was very disappointed during COVID. Oh, me too. Me too. I didn't even talk about it publicly. It hurt me so much. It, it hurt me so much. And, uh, um, he talks about human rights and, and he's like always, human he's, condition. he always sees the power differential and things. And he didn't see it there he see because it. he got afraid. And so he, if if anybody is supposed to have a sense of history, it's supposed to be Chomsky. And he let it all go out the window when it came to I COVID know. and mandates. And he said the unvaccinated should remove themselves from society. And then when asked how should they feed themselves, he said that's their problem. And now I can I can let an old man make a mistake like that. I can he, too, but... If he would now apologize, apologize. I know. but he me. won't. I, it hurt me because, you know, I, I wrote and I said I did not tweet, but I wrote, you know. I said, you write him take email? out the word. <laughs> I, I wanted to, okay. but I didn't. But I, I wanted to say, take out the word unvaccinated and put in Jew. Yeah. Put in Palestinian. Put in that. And then look at that, you know. And I and, and thankfully, people like yourself and, and Glenn Greenwald did respond to it. But it did hurt me to the core. Because so much of, of the of injustices in Central America and in the world has been exposed by that man. And so much uh, of how the government works and how the manufacture of consent is a, a must read for anyone who wants to understand how the power structures are subverted in this country. And, and for him to do that, there was a lot. You know, when I, Jimmy Kimmel, I, I don't think he's a bad guy. No, well, he's not a bad guy. What happens, though, I do believe that, like, there's the potential for people. Like, Hitler and, like, when, at, at the, the, the Wannasee conference, when, when, you know, Heydrich made this decision, the final solution of the Jewish question, it wasn't him. Yet hundreds of thousands of people had to put this thing. They had to have guys have trains. They had to organize. I mean, Anne Frank was the last train to get out. Uh, from Holland to get to Auschwitz. Somebody had to put somebody on that train and everybody had to kind of agree to go and, along with this thing. And that's what, like, when, in my lunacy of what was happening during COVID was to look at the Stanley Milgram experiment. And part of that has been now... Uh, questioned, rightfully so, but the tenant of it has not been. Stanley Milgram was a university, university professor who did a study saying that 60% of people would torture and kill other people if they're told by authority to do so in these series of experiments at the university. And I, I, I beg people to look at that because what it shows is that well-intentioned or seemingly good people can be talked or fooled into doing things to, to physically harm other human beings. And so that would get back to the question of that 3% that we talked about earlier. The 3% have to stand up. It took 3% of the revolutionary people at that time, those farmers, those ignorant, poor farmers, to not leave Washington in, at, at, in those battles, but to stand and fight. And that's going to take 3%. And that's all it takes. 3% to turn this country around. But it takes 3%, not 2 so I'm hopeful that we can get that 3% in this next election and see if we can, at least, even if Kennedy doesn't win, at least these subjects, can. Will, he will get to the point, he will win one of the first two primaries. He, we can at least address some of these things so that we can, it could come, so that the, they can be exposed. And hopefully some of these people at least tried. I don't even need them convicted. I would at least like to have what they had in South Africa, a truth. And it, reconciliation. Truth and reconciliation. Let's have one. Let's have one. And say the truth, and we won't even try you. But say what you did wrong. Right. If you say that, I, I forgive you. If but, Fauci says, I funded the gain of function that caused this virus to mutate, and that got released and caused this pandemic, and we were wrong to do it. Yeah. I'll, okay. Yeah, I don't need you to go to jail then. then uh, just say it. So, yeah. so now, I don't have to walk around still with some kind of this aura of 
you know, I'm some kind of mental case. Yeah. You know, I'm some kind of irresponsible guy who's saying things I know to be wrong for clicks. That's what that's what that's what was was said about me. And people believe that. Yeah. That somehow I already had a successful show. I was already selling I out. Know, the. I, I didn't have to do anything. What I actually did hurt me. I know what I did, too. I mean, when I said, like, it's, it's your choice. It's your body. It's your choice. And I said, the Second Amendment is for this. If you want to force something on me, then that's why we have a Second Amendment, because I'm going to, you know, even though I don't own one, the idea I is either, I could. Because I know I'd use it on someone I know. <laughs> I just know I, I would. But, it, you know, that, that single thing caused so much hate and so much death threats and craziness for me and i don't regret it because at that time you have to be in if there is a, a voice of sanity in a in, in in a room full of lunatics you know they're gonna say you're the lunatic you know that's and that's what I, happened to us you know when i brought up the bodily uh my body my choice yeah. to oh. someone who was oh. someone oh. who was for how mandates, dare you a comedian who was for mandates oh, yeah, I know. i've known all my Did life Did he apologize for it after no no. Still haven't st stopped talking to me. One of those people who stopped talking to me. Yeah, yeah. So I said, what about my body, my choice? Didn't we say this our whole life? And he said, that's only for pregnancy. Oh, God. That's what he said. I'm not Whoa. making it up. I know. And he, and he goes, and pregnancy is not contagious. And my response was, well, I'm pretty sure your stupidity is because it's <laughs> catching on like wildfire. I know. Well, the the idea at the end of the day, this country individualism it has to be the individual and it has to be the individual's choice or we have tyranny the idea of you know what is best for everyone is going to be what crushes freedom and that's what did and the the idea that somehow um i i want everybody to do well but it is not my we have to have body integrity or we have no freedom at all that's the last bastion of freedom is body integrity we have we to have bodily autonomy we have to yeah and I that I and I took the autonomy. hat to Bill Maher. He was he talked about bodily autonomy on his show when it was not popular to do so. No, and I love Bill. And Bill is Bill's now he's a right winger, isn't he? That's everybody <laughs> says he is, right? I love Bill and God bless him. You know, I know he's got a little bit of the Trump uh, derangement. He singer, has it. But but so what? He's still open to ideas and stuff. I had a wonderful conversation with him while we were drinking and getting stoned. But at least we had a conversation. Let's get back to conversations. I'll have a conversation with anybody. And God knows I can be wrong about things. Right. God knows I am. And I want, my, I want my opinions to be challenged. But I want my opinions stated. And I want somebody smarter than me, which is most people, to show me where I'm wrong. And then I will make the adjustment. I'll absolutely do it. What do I? I'm a college dropout. What the hell do I know? But I know that if I don't stand up and if I don't say what I, I feel, I can't, I can't sleep at night. Well, you sound like a pretty smart college dropout. And let me tell you this. <laughs> Uh, college is overrated. I have a college degree, and it was a mistake. I didn't need to go to college. I should have started comedy right away. It just stopped my life for six years. It took me six years to get a four-year degree. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm not a student. And, and you know, right now, I, you got to go get 100000 or $200,000 in debt to go to college, or... Or do you want to just go be a carpenter or a plumber? You know how much money I have to pay carpenters and plumbers and electricians? And, and it's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm going to throw something out here. How about they say like an 18-year-old is not smart enough to realize what the damage of $100,000 alone, what that could cause them. But they can allow a 7-year-old to make a decision for the rest of their life and what gender they could be. I mean, come on. So you know what's so many things, but you know what's happening. That, but if you even mention that, you're a... You can't mm -hmm. mention that. I didn't mention it, by the way. I hope you don't mention that. I didn't say it. Um, they don't let kids in California, you can't use a tanning salon until you're 18, even if your parents <laughs> say it's okay. I didn't know. <laughs> Did you know that? That's a fact. That. I didn't know that. You can't use a tanning oh. salon until you're 18, even if your parents say it's okay, but you can have gender affirming care. I know. That sounds good, doesn't and it? And all I'm saying is that- Douglas Murray just wrote a great article about that in the New York Post. Oh, really? Douglas Murray, yeah. He's you great. 80% of the people who have the- the gender dysphoria, they grow out of it. They grow out of it, yeah. And and it's a, you know, love all the people. And when you're an adult, I will I will back you, your right to do whatever you want whatever. to do. I will back you 100%. I will, 100%. I will lay down and have one of my toes run over for you. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think we have to be so super careful with this generation of children now and what they've gone through. We don't know. We don't know what happens. It's like, I haven't read everything about it, but I, I've, I've tried to educate myself the best I can. And the fact of what's happened to people of color, like 
African American kids were just catching up in the reading in schools. We're just getting close to closing the gap and uh, uh, everything that has to, that goes against people and who, who are low income people. People are struggling. They were just catching up. And then after COVID, they've dropped down to like what it was mm-hmm. 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And that is a crime. And, and there's and no people plan. People called me anti uh, teacher and anti union because yeah. I was for school opening. Not close. Yeah, me too. I, I was attacked. And like my mother was a teacher for 30 years. She would never have allowed this. My dad died of the flu. He would have never considered in his life shutting a business just to protect him. He would have never done that. Not that he wanted to die, but right. he would have never been in consideration. That's right. And a God bless him. And and like that that was um, you know, if anything, it's like my dad. Uh, you know, was 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 such a great example to me because he knew in 1954 in San Francisco that that not that the people who were not renting to, to African Americans back then that was wrong. And after mm-hmm. the Brown by uh, the Board of Education, Brown versus Board of Education said, "This is it. This is wrong. This has to change. And whether they're going to change it or not, I'm going against it. I'm going to go. F- f- this is the right thing to do." And that was so. He was. I grew up in like in that. And he married a, a, an Asian woman, and so you know, which not wasn't necessarily easy in 1960, 61. And um, I really feel like that. I have a, a, you know, um, that in my blood to like, you know, so it's just, it's hard to go against that. I can't, I can't go against that. You know, I I just, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. So, but I, I do feel that the tide is turning and I feel like the price that whatever you and I had to pay, it's, it's, it pales in comparison to like, um, what other people who had their completely had their businesses shut yes, down, I know. lost everything. And I, I think it's like, I'm lucky that I was able to at least make the money that I made, you know, 20 years ago and not spend every penny of it. Uh, so that, you know, and I'm hopefully for some of the people to the, to get a chance to come see us and listen that they would the, at least, um, they would be, um, their hearts would be lifted temporarily and they get a laugh. And That's get, all I want. And, and, and they get to experience community with like-minded people. And yeah. so you're not alone. And so I have a lot of people, I don't know if they say this to you, but a lot of people come up to me and they have since 2015 and they always tell me that you ca- your show kept me sane because all they see in the corporate media is telling them that their thoughts are insane. You're crazy to think this way. And you're and yeah. I tell them, no, it's okay. And there's a lot of other people who think like that too. Yeah. And thank you for having me on because you've been, uh, I mean, to have this conversation, I think people can see and have a, have an idea of at least the way my brain works and the stuff that where I go to. And it's, you can't really do that in a, you know, two minute soundbite or whatever. Right. They can try to destroy you and, and, and attack your character and the little things, the soundbite here and there or whatever in a tweet, but they can't, if you, you know, provide like you've done for me today, thank you, a platform where you can discuss ideas and see that, you know what, we're all okay here. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. They're normal people. Yeah, we're not we're not crazy. We're not murderers. We're not trying to undermine democracy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, Rob Schneider, thank you so much for coming on. I want everybody to check out his new special on Fox Nation, foxnation.com. Thank you very much. And uh, I watched it last night. It's 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 really one of my favorite specials in a long time. So thank you very much. Thanks for doing it. And uh, I wish I would have caught you on on tour. So yeah, I didn't even know you were on. We'll do it. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna watch you. I'm I'm checking your schedule too, where I can come catch you. Ah, I want to come. That's gonna be great. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Hey, come see us on tour. We'll be in Baltimore, San Francisco, Huntington Beach, Rosemont, and Chicago, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, New York City, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, Stamford, Connecticut, and more, and St. Louis. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all our tickets for all our shows.